This room is designed to really trace the evolution, the development of Miro's visual vocabulary, of his language of very reduced uh, signs. This drawing, uh, which is an enormously important work, is from a series of drawings that Miro made in, uh, in August and September of 1924. And these were the first drawings in which Miro fully developed his mature vocabulary. The subject is a Spanish dancer, and you see her arms, she's probably a flamenco dancer, and it suggests the gesture of her movement in space. This half circle suggests a breast with a heart-like form uh, coming out of it. Over here is the dancer's leg, and this simple straight line represents her body, the erect profile of the dancer. A couple of curvy lines over here suggest the folds of her skirt, and right in the middle is the dancer's sex. So there's always a, a kind of play that Miro has between absolute seriousness and also eroticism. And Miro was deeply interested in erotic subject matter. And to make it even more ironic, well, he makes all sorts of associations. So the pleats of the skirt also suggest the same wavy line for her hair. And so he makes analogies between different types of forms. But in this case, he creates a kind of crank with a star-like form that also relates to the form for her sex and a hand. And the idea is as if you're cranking up the dancer and she's a kind of automaton or a machine-like creature. So I wanted to place this here because this is really an inaugural moment for Miro. But I organized the galleries so that the viewer, who looks very carefully, can make all sorts uh, of relationships, build relationships. So the wheel-like form, which also has a spider-like vagina, appears in this painting. It appears, again, in this wonderful uh, drawing, in this drawing, and the sign for the female sex appears here as well. And depending on the context, a sign's meaning can change. And the whole idea is that Miro reduces things to their simplest essence. These images also speak to Miro's interest in materials and often unorthodox materials. So this is painted on what looks like wallpaper. This work, which is extremely physical and extremely uh, material is painted uh, on um, a kind of sand-like texture with little pebbles that you might use for roofing material. I believe it is a kind of roofing material. And here too, you have something, a three, that is a clear sign, then an abstract shape, a cross, and then something that almost looks like a signature, but is not quite. So we're right on the limits of reading. We're right on the limits of recognizability. And Miro is constantly playing with the boundary between recognizable appearances and lines that are more abstract. This is one of the most beautiful, and I think one of the most difficult rooms in the uh, exhibition. Between July and September uh, of 1936, Miro executed a series of 27 paintings of the same size on masonite. Masonite was developed as an industrial material, but then artists often adapted it uh, for painting. And rather than covering the surface with a material with paint that would uh, even out and smoothen uh, out the holes, Miro painted directly on the masonite to maintain the maximum aggressivity in the painting. And what's so interesting about these is they were done during the first two months of the Spanish Civil War. These are not paintings about the Spanish Civil War. And in fact, the figuration comes from a notebook Miro had done four years earlier where he designed the sets and costumes for uh, the ballet uh, Jeux d'Enfant. 
Um, and so the, what he did was adapt some of that figuration from his sketchbook to other figuration that he was developing here and in his sketches almost creating a collage. So two sketches from two different periods might yield this figuration. Characteristically, we have, at least in this work, Miro's signs for the plenitude of life, breast-like forms or testes, a phallic uh, form, something that almost suggests a kind of grotto, these very elemental forms that are celebrations of life. And then the surface is filled with this horrible, nasty smear of paint that has rocks uh, put uh, right onto it. It's very fragile. And it's as if Miro is taking his elegant line and purposefully disrupting it, undoing what he described of as the niceties of form and color to express his rage and his aggression uh, over contemporary events. That is also true of this painting from the 1930s, which is one of the masterworks uh, of the collection. And it's a series of horrible, monstrous figures that almost seemed oppressed by the space that surrounds them. The way the cloud-like forms, and this one becomes a kind of dinosaur of, or, or some kind of prehistoric animal with teeth, everything seems to be pushing down on the figures. And as the space pushes down, the figures become more distorted. So the breast of this figure and the female sex, which is also very phallic, is meant to suggest something that goes against the natural order. And this, in fact, relates to a series of drawings that Miro made in uh, 1937 in Paris. He did about 100 of these uh, at the uh, very famous Académie de la Grande Chaumière. And this was an academy where all sorts of modern artists would go to, to paint from the live model. What is so extraordinary is how Miro subjects the live model to these monstrous deformations. Again, this expression of rage at a very difficult time. Miro was living in Paris in exile during the Civil War. His family only was able to join him six months later. He had lost his studio. So this was a real uh, a period of, uh, of, of deep uncertainty uh, for Miro. And it is expressed in these drawings, which are anything but academic nudes. This entire room is all about Miro and gesturalism. In 1947, Miro came to the United States because he had been, conditioned, he had been commissioned to do a mural painting for a hotel in Cincinnati. And he spent a good deal of time in New York and became very interested in young American painting, especially the generation of artists who would later be known uh, as the abstract expressionists. Just as in Europe, he was interested in art informel, in tachisme, and again, reacting to a lot of contemporary movements. This work, which is called Woman and Birds, is not literally meant to be a woman uh, and birds, but metaphorically to suggest the presence of a figure, and the bird could perhaps be this sign, which looks like the mathematical sign for pi, although that's not what it's intended uh, to be. The way Miro lets his paint seep into the surface and uh, sort of liquefies his paint, one can draw all sorts of parallels. This is from 1959 with the work of an artist like Helen Frankenthaler, one of the great stain painters uh, of the second abstract expressionist uh, generation. And in so many cases, Miro begins with a mark on the surface, or he just allows the paint to do what it's going to do, and he manipulates the canvas and moves it around and allows drips and allows uh, mistakes, and then begins to define very loosely a kind of figure. So you see it uh, here as well, but it's the gesture the presence of the India ink, 
uh, on the surface and the kinds of accidents that happen, but they're always controlled accidents. It's the gesture that really obtains in uh, all of these works.